A Letter from Abigail Adams to John Adams, 16 October 1774, from the Adams Family Papers, Massachusetts Historical Society, read for LibriVox.org by Rhonda Fetterman. My much-loved friend, I dare not express to you at three hundred miles distance how ardently I long for your return. I have some very miserly wishes, and cannot consent to your spending one hour in town till at least I have had you twelve. The idea plays about my heart, unnerves my hand whilst I write, awakens all the tender sentiments that years have increased and matured, and which when with me were every day dispensing to you. The whole collected stock of ten weeks' absence knows not how to brook any longer restraint, but will break forth and flow through my pen. May the like sensations enter thy breast, and in spite of all the weighty cares of state, mingle themselves with those I wish to communicate, for in giving them utterance I have felt more sincere pleasure than I have known since the 10th of August. Many have been the anxious hours I have spent since that day. The threatening aspect of our public affairs, the complicated distress of this province, the arduous and perplexed business in which you are engaged have all conspired to agitate my bosom, with fears and apprehensions to which I have heretofore been a stranger, and far from thinking the scene closed, it looks as though the curtain was but just drawn and only the first scene of the infernal plot disclosed, and whether the end will be tragical, heaven alone knows. You cannot be, I know, nor do I wish to see you in an act of spectator. But if the sword be drawn, I bid adieu to all domestic felicity, and look forward to that country where there is neither wars nor rumors of war in a firm belief that through the mercy of its king we shall both rejoice there together. I greatly fear that the arm of treachery and violence is lifted over us as a scourge, and heavy punishment from heaven for our numerous offenses and for the misimprovements of our great advantages. If we expect to inherit the blessings of our fathers, we should return a little more to their primitive simplicity of manners and not sink into inglorious ease. We have too many high-sounding words and too few actions that correspond with them. I have spent one Sabbath in town since you left me. I saw no difference in respect to ornaments, but in the country you must look for that virtue, of which you find but small glimmerings in the metropolis. Indeed, they have not the advantages nor the resolution to encourage our own manufactories, which people in the country have. To the mercantile part, tis considered as throwing away their own bread, but they must retrench their expenses, and be content with a small share of gain, for they will find but few who will wear their livery. As for me, I will seek wool and flax and work willingly with my hands, and indeed there is occasion for all our industry and economy. You mentioned the removal of our books from Boston. I believe they are safe there, and it would incommode the gentlemen to remove them, as they would not have a place to repair for study. I suppose they would not choose to be at the expense of boarding out. Mr. Williams, I believe, keeps pretty much with his mother. Mr. Hill's father had some thoughts of removing up to Braintree, provided he could be accommodated with a house, which he finds very difficult. Mr. Crouch's last determination was to tarry in town unless anything new takes place. His friends in town oppose his removal so much that he is determined to stay. The opinion you have entertained of General Gage is, I believe, just. Indeed, he professes to act only upon the defensive people in the country begin to be very anxious for the Congress to rise. They have no idea of the weighty business you have to transact, and their blood boils with indignation at the hostile preparations they are constant witnesses of. Mr. Quincy's so secret departure is a matter of various speculation. 
Some say he is deputed by the Congress, others that he has gone to Holland, and the Tories say he has gone to be hanged. I rejoice at the favorable account you give me of your health. May it be continued to you. My health is much better than it was last fall. Some folks say I grow very fat. I venture to write most anything in this letter, because I know the care of the bearer. He will be most sadly disappointed if you should be broke up before he arrives, as he is very desirous of being introduced by you to a number of gentlemen of respectable characters. I almost envy him that he should see you before I can. Mr. Thaxer and Rice present their regards to you. Uncle Quincy, too, sends his love to you, and he is very good to call and see me, and so have many others of my friends been. Colonel Waxen and Lady were here on Monday, and send their love to you. The Colonel promised to write. Mrs. Waxen will spend a day or two on her return with me. I told Betsy to write you. She said she would if you were her husband. Your mother sends her love to you, and all your family too numerous to name desire to be remembered. You will receive letters from two who are earnest to write to Papa as if the welfare of a kingdom depended upon it. If you can give any guess within a month, let me know when you think of returning to your most affectionate Abigail Adams. End of letter. This recording is in the public domain.